Uh, good afternoon, class. Today we shall be discussing on the course bus 411 class today. And in this, we are going to see a brief description of the course that we are going to have today. Uh, here is the brief uh, history of the course and the course lecturer. The course code is BOSS 411, and the course title is Business Policy and Strategy 1. It may mean that you will have this course in second semester as BOSS 412. But the one we are going to treat this time around is BOSS 411. The credit unit is two credit units, it's a true credit unit course. Uh, and uh, the session is 2019-2020. My name is Bisan Danladi Joseph Ezekiel. And uh, if you want, wish to locate me, my office here in the Department of Business at Min, Faculty of Management Sciences, University of Abuja, here in main campus. Uh, my telephone numbers are there, and then my email. The office hours, Thursday and Fridays, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, now, general course overview. Business Boss 411 is a course that is widely taught in undergraduate and postgraduate programs because of its relevance to business managers, corporate organization, and institution that manage people and resources to achieve organizational goals and objectives. These objectives are embedded in the organizational mission and vision. The course business policy and strategy helps to shape employees' behavior and direct their course of actions to organizational policy and strategy to enable the organization achieve those set goals and objectives. An organization without policy is like a machine without direction. You can imagine you have a machine and you have the speed you are to move without that uh, break that will control the speed at which you are going, there may be danger. So the speed could be your action, and while the break that will control the speed at which you are going will be the policy. So uh, the course is going to expose students to case studies from companies and organizations. The cost structure. How will this cost structure look like? Upon completion of business policy and strategy one, students should be able to, one, define business policy and strategy with rel related uh, concepts. Explain the basic reasons underpinning the study of a policy and strategy to organizations. Describe and distinguish the functions, importance, advantages, and the mode of business policy formulation and implementations. Discuss environmental scanning and its relevance to organizations. Design mission, vision statement for any company of your choice. Also, define the concept, strategy, and its relevance to business organizations. A good number of us that run businesses do not know the impact 
strategy has so far as far as you want to remain relevant in the field of business. So there we are going to discuss the relevance of this strategy. Also, we shall be discussing the level of strategy available to organizations, which we have structural, we have, uh, we have so many functional uh, level of manage a business strategy and so on. So we are going to actually discuss on them in details as the course goes on. Also, at the course of this class, also, at the course of this class, we shall discuss on industry analysis and it's relevant to the survival of businesses. There is a need to analyze the environment where you are operating your business. If you do not analyze this strategy, I mean uh, environment, sure, competitors will run you down and very soon you pack your lot and go or your business will just collapse. So there is a need to analyze the environment, the business, the industry, the sector where you are to know the competitors within that environment. How are they surviving? Also, we shall learn on the micro and macro environmental forces. We shall discuss on or discuss on micro and macro environmental forces. So we look at those micro environmental forces. These are controllable factors within the reach of the company or the business man. And then the macro environment are also sources, I mean, such kind of forces that control business. But this time around, these forces are not within the reach of the business guru or the owner of the business. So we shall discuss and see the impact how these forces are to the business. Then at our, the course of our discussion, we shall learn business strategy and model. There we can now discuss on types of strategy. Focus strategy, the generational strategy, and so many types of strategy, which we are going to talk, and then also define what is a business model. What makes you behave different from another kind of business that are producing similar product is what we refer to as a business model. So we shall be discussing on how you can develop your own business model that will give you an edge over your competitors. Also, we shall know, or students shall know, how to analyze case studies. At the course of this uh, study, students will be introduced or shall be introduced to case studies where they can analyze company based on their performance and their weaknesses. And what do we do to prevent future occurrences if they are failing? And what do we do to add more on what they are doing that is making them progress? So in case study, it will give you a prerequisite knowledge on how you can analyze a company that is doing well and a company that is weak when you come to performance indices. Now, method of assessment in which the student shall be assessed. There will be two tutor marked assignment and a computer-based test throughout the course in addition to a final examination. Two, an assessment will be given to the end of the class. And submission will be on the due date. A date will be given to you that you will submit this 
assignment order tma will be in the form of individual assignment it could be individual assignment or group assignment and so on so all these will be put together and then given the total exam and then put it all together exam will be 70 percent and while this uh, continual assessment shall be 30 percent however we'll give you the breakdown of how we can arrive at that 30 percent three no let assignment will be accepted please students should take note if an assignment is given do well to submit your own on time on or before the due date it is always advisable that students should submit on or before the due date but if you submit after the due date it has its own consequences all it has its own penalties and probably will not accept your 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 assignment so please to avoid all such kind of uh, embarrassment and all of that please do well to submit your assignment in due time students are expected to turn in what you have at the time it is due attendance is also compulsory please take note of this 70 percent attendance is the prerequisite for one to write exam if you are not having 70 percent of your attendance when you come to lectures the school authority have the right to stop you when coming to write any exam now grading style or system or policy student performance in this course will be through the following assessment model as specified in the table below as we can see first TMA attendance has five percent and you can see how attendance can attract max if you actually sit back and you don't attend lectures how then can you have attendance of five marks two if there is any chat discussion and any other forum you are involved into you are expected again to attract a, a, a 10 percent marks also so and then the second tma is assessment which takes 15 percent so you can see the other 15 percent is from you your voluntary action that will have earned you those mark free and you go and what do we mean by voluntary action attendance nobody will force you you can go and attend the class you chat when there is a chat room or a chat or a discussion you be in and discuss then at the end you have 15 mark free for yourself and then the only one that probably you will write is the one that we say is 15 marks so if you add the 15 plus 15 it will give you 30 marks then you will now see your final exam will now take 70 percent if you are able to get all 30 plus 70 it will now give you 100 percent so which i hope all my students will have 100 percent in their scores and i i will not i will not be happy with any student who score below the pass mark please now course slash class rules in every uh, uh, setting be setting rules and regulation but in this regard i thank god i'm actually taking you policy there must be a policy that is guiding our behavior in this class and it should students should know rules and policies are not the same but when we say rules here we mean when you break any rule there are penalties so we are actually discussing on rules now Students who are absent from class. Wow. Students who are absent from class will lose the marks for attendance. You can see the penalty that will come. 
Two, students who submit their assignment later than the due date will lose total marks again, obtainable. Also, students who are unruly during chat, discussion, and others, and other class interaction will lose one mark of the total marks obtained. Some students, when a chat or a discussion is going on, they use insultive languages, which is not loud. Please, once you are interacting with your colleagues, you need to have that spirit of tolerance. Accept critics, and, and it should be objective critics, constructive critic. Uh, critic. Should not be destructive. Any critics should be constructive, so that there must be a very good sense in what you are saying. Then all assignment for this course will be submitted electronically through the email provided in the facilitator's profile, unless otherwise instructed, of course. So all assignment will be submitted electronically, except it proof otherwise, I may say that submit all your assignment to your class rep and he will hand over to the lecturer. So, it all depends, but officially, all assignments should be electronically submitted. Assignment must be submitted by the given deadline or special permission must be requested from instructor before the due date. Of course, if you have any kids, you do that beforehand. All students that have enrolled for this course are expected to maintain high level of decorum, commitment, responsibility, and participation to all learning activities. Please, all students should get this, that all our interaction all our way of doing things should have a level of respect and, and, and dignity, value human beings. Just talk as if you are talking with your own self. Because you cannot just look at yourself and degrade yourself. So you must respect yourself, and if you respect yourself, you must respect others. So it is expected that students must enroll for this cause, with a high level of what? Decorum, commitment, responsibility, participating in all activities on the e-learning. All right? Academic dishonesty in this course includes all classwork and individual homework should be done independently. By the time that I discovered that Mr. A submit his assignment, and Mr. B also submit his, her own assignment, and the assignments are almost the same, or even the same, then there should be a penalty. And that is what we call exam misconduct. So, either I penalize the two of them, and write to the director for them to face the panel, or the decision will be taken straight for them to have carryover on those courses. So, we must respect that. Do your assignment separate from others. Please don't copy anybody's work. If you don't understand, you can ask someone, of course, to put you through. Do not mean that you should copy the person's work verbatim. No. It is not accepted in academic. Okay? Unless explicitly stated otherwise on the assignment instruction. Good. Except if I say, join Mr. A and Mr. B and do this assignment. Fine. It is based on instruction. So you should be able to do that. And you jointly do it with innovation and creativity and add value to the work. So then the general solution strategy may be discussed. But solution must be written independently, of course. So if you discuss any problem with anyone else, they must be, they must be what? Knowledge by writing their name at the top of your assignment, labeling them collaborators 
of course. So what we are saying here is that if there are other material which you use and you consulted this material, you should be able to acknowledge all these persons that yes, so that and then you acknowledge them as collaborators, those who you have benefited from their own causes of action. Now, next class, we in our next class, we shall be looking at study session one, which comprises of definition of business policy and strategy with related concepts. So there we are going to discuss what is business policy or what is policy and what is also what a strategy. We will see scholarly uh, definitions, how scholars have made a term to define the concept business policy or policy itself. And then also see how scholars were able to define what is a strategy. Then, we are also going to see or to learn much about the functions policy play in our life as an organization. Importance that we derive from policy. Advantages and the mode of policy formulation and implementations. So these are the concept or things we are going to learn in the next class. So please bear in mind that we are actually going to discuss extensively on functions of policy, what policy does in our organizations. As a, as a human being, if you have a policy, anyhow person that talks to you or in anywhere you go, you don't enter anywhere. There is a policy that is guiding you on where to go, when to go, how to go, that place. So, and you must respect that. Once you have such kind of policy, they will now see the benefit in which you will derive from it and the function and all of that. Then, we will also see how policy are formulated. If we are to formulate policy, what are those components that are are, 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 are to be put in place before we can now formulate policies. Is there any procedure to follow before we formulate policies? If there are, then definitely in the next class we are going to see. Then also implementations. You see, well, we are number one. Let me put it like that. To be honest, Espad have rated Nigeria as one of the best country in terms of policy formulation. But our major challenge as a country, even our company here in Nigeria, is policy implementations. So a good numbers of us were lacking implementation of policy. However, next class, we shall discuss this in detail and see a student who make a timetable that he wants to score a very good score in exam. He sat down and then mapped out a timetable how to read then but when it comes to implementation of this timetable and probably he put that timetable by 3 a.m and when he wake up they will set alarm to wake him up and when the alarm is ringing in fact he will close his eyes and be looking where the phone is and switch it off so you can see that it is actually policy implementation that is difficult but you actually sat down jointly and then came up with a sound policy that you want to make this, and then you make all your timetable for your lectures or for your own personal reading. That is policy formulation. But policy implementation is somehow very complex or difficult. But if you are able to get it right, I tell you, the sky is your starting point in any of your organization. Then lastly, the basic reason, we shall also know the basic reasons underpinning the study of business policy and strategy to any organization. So, in the next class, we shall be discussing on the reasons underpinning the study of business policy and strategy to any organization. Thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate your, your, uh, your, 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 your commitment for you to choose University of Abuja Center for Distant Learning to have your program here. 
And I believe strongly you will not be regret. You will surely reap the fruit of your labor. Thank you. We'll see you next class and have a nice day.